Some of the fastest race boats on the planet, thousands of horsepower and the small matter of championship titles to be won. It's going to be an awesome weekend's racing at the Roar Offshore Powerboat Races. Welcome to Fort Myers Beach for the final round of the P1 APBA Offshore Championship. And what a year it's been. There's been a ferocious battle in the super spectacular, super fast Class 1 title race with three boats still in the hunt. And in case you need reminding what's happened, take a look at this. We have boats from all over out there in what is one of the premier classes in all of powerboat racing. Look at Geico come up alongside. There is our leader, 222 Offshore. Wow, look at that, side by side. Now Geico drives by. Here comes Geico, coming up strong. And Geico is going to take the win. Put the hammers down on the flat, fast water of the Lake of the Ozarks. Right now, I'm pretty happy if I'm the victory team. And we're just about ready to go green here in Sarasota. Victory, they jump out front. Geico goes through. Oh, Geico hooked it. And victory team, whoa, victory team goes over too. Well, tough break there for victory and for Geico. No, you couldn't strip it, that's for sure. Victory up in front. We are off and away here in Michigan City. Oh, look at the Lucas Oil boat heading down this right away. Ico is now trying to chase down the victory team. Triple two takes the win. So all eyes will be on triple two offshore. The Australians have a 10 point lead and effectively got one hand or perhaps more likely one finger on that championship trophy. But this is racing and anything can happen. Class one are the headline act then, and we'll be seeing a lot more of them later. But as you can hear behind me, we've got a whole lot of racing to bring you. Four more, in fact, on the schedule. And some of those other boys, well, they don't mess around either. Well, there's going to be plenty of action on the water this weekend, and as is the tradition here at Fort Myers Beach, the racing all takes place on the Saturday, which means the teams will test on the Friday, and Thursday night is when the whole thing kicks off at the block party. First up is the turn of the Super Cats. Now these 140 mile an hour catamarans always put on a great show. Top of the table are Pro Floors Racing, who have travelled all the way from New Zealand to be here, and it's been worth it as they've dominated the season. But they're not quite champions just yet. 
hot on their tail at WHM Motorsport, and they'll be ready for any kind of slip-up. We had a good jump at the beginning of the season, and uh, then uh, WHM have uh, chased us down throughout the season. And uh, you know, hey, we're uh, we're pretty good rivals with each other, so uh, you know, hey, it's going to be this race here. It's uh, down to the wire. Well, best of luck to all of the Supercat teams. Let's take a look at the course that they'll all be taking on with your race commentator, Martin Sanborn. Thanks, Kevin. The course is five miles long, clockwise rotation with eight turns. As they head north to one, two, and three, that sets them up to head south at four with a left-hand dogleg at five into six, seven, and eight at the south end of the race course with the long straightaway back to the start-finish line. All right, as we head out to the race course, we're on board with Pro Floors here. This is the fourth race of the weekend here in Fort Myers Beach, and we have a green flag. We are underway. Pro Floors with Wayne Valder and Grant Bruckerman coming right up alongside Performance Boat Center. Super calm conditions here, 83 degrees, wind at 10 miles an hour, not very much humidity, little bit of cloud cover keeping the heat down. As the boats head to the north end of the race course, AMH Motorsports is out front. On board MCON Racing with Tyson Garvin and Tyler Miller, they drew the inside lane as they all head towards turn one at the north end of the race course. Out front is AMH. Pro Floors coming up hard on the outside as we go on board with Graydell. Chris Grant and Billy Moore, they started in lane two. The boats are required to maintain their lanes through the first turn. Graydell coming in hot. AMH through the turn first. Graydell has to go through the rooster tail. They couldn't maintain that inside lane, and they now push Pro Floors a little bit wide. AMH out front. Second place is Pro Floors. Side-by-side -side battle with WHM Motorsports. It's WHM edges past on the outside. You can see you can't even put a boat between the two of them. WHM gives them just barely a lane to stay off of the wake of AMH. As Pro Floors now dives right across the top of that wake, WHM on the outside, that's Dependable coming around way on the outside, making a run on WHM. Dependable, a brand new boat for this race. But WHM holds them off as we go on board with Billy Moff and Jay Muller. Pro Floors now coming up hard on the inside. They definitely have some boat speed. WHM carried speed around the outside. As they go around that left-hand dog leg, you can see Pro Floors just getting past them. Let's take a look at this tight setup as they go into turn one. WHM, Dependable, and Pro Floors all heading towards turn one. What a great start here for the 2019 APBA National Championships. Back on board with Billy Moff and Jay Muller as they're just to the outside of Pro Floors. Pro Floors comes into this event with the points lead, but they are not satisfied to just win the championship. They want to win the last race of the year here in Fort Myers Beach. As Billy Moff dives to the inside lane now to try to get some clean water. That's dependable just in their rooster tail. And here's our view from Pro Floors. AMH picking beautiful lines, not giving them anywhere to go. Pro Floors has to dive to the outside, go through that rooster tail, and go deeper than he wanted to go. And that gives WHM the opportunity to come up on the inside. But Pro Floors carrying all kinds of speed. WHM Motorsports in third place as we look at our leader. That's Aaron Hope and Anthony Smith, and they have that boat hooked up. They've done a lot of work getting that boat set up all season long, and it is paying off. On board number six, MCON Racing with Tyson Gavin and Tyler Miller. As Performance Boat Center with Myra Coyle and Johnny Tomlinson just come up and get past them. And here is our battle for third place. WHM Motorsports holding dependable to the outside. And WHM goes across the way to take the short way around the race course. Dependable goes wide on the outside to stay into clean water. On board with WHM Motorsports in third place. They're trying to run down Pro Floors. Oh, and Dependable has a problem. They are slowing down, and it looks like they may be out of the race. We'll be back with more coverage of the 2019 APBA National Championships right after this.
Welcome back to the 2019 APBA National Championships here in Fort Myers Beach, Florida. Our leader continues to be AMH Motorsports with Aaron Hope and Anthony Smith. They checked out from the beginning and have not looked back since. They have the clean water and that boat is hooked up. You can see what a lead they have on the second place boat. That is Pro Floors. Wayne Valder and Grant Bruggerman, the current points leaders in the overall chase and WHM Motorsports in third place. You can see the top three boats have checked out from the rest of the fleet. AMH Motorsports with that clean water, they get to pick their lines. And they pick gorgeous lines, not giving a whole lot of room when anybody's close to them. Back on board with Pro Floors. You can see they're trying to find that fast way around the race course, so they go to the inside. WHM Motorsports still running in third place. Billy and Jay traditionally love rough water, so I'm sure this isn't the best water for their setup. Totally changes the setup on these boats from a rough water setup to a smooth water setup in terms of how they have to set up their propellers. There's MCON currently running in fifth position, definitely not where they're used to running. As AMH rounds the south end of the race course, heading towards the long straightaway, Pro Floors looks like they're gonna come across. Oh, he skated just a little bit. Goes back to the outside. WHM Motorsports continues to go even wider. Let's take a nice look at that WHM Motorsports boat with Billy Moff and Jay Muller. Just carrying on the back of that boat, flying it down the front straightaway. Back to our second place boat. This is Pro Floors. As they make their way around the north end of the race course. Oh, AMH has got a problem. AMH pulls off to the inside. What a tough break they led from the start. That is going to allow Pro Floors to move into first place. Oh, what a disappointment that has to be for Aaron Hope and Anthony Smith in the AMH Motorsports boat. And that puts Pro Floors in first. As Pro Floors is now running down Great L to put them down a lap. WHM Motorsports now moves into second place. They're staying to the outside for some clean water. Pro Floors has the inside. Gray Dell in the second lane. WHM Motorsports going wide. As Pro Floors making their way around the north end of the race course. On board with Gray Dell, that's Chris Grant and Billy Moore. Not seeing a whole lot of throttle movement there from Billy Moore. This calm water, he just has them pinned. There's Performance Boat Center. Johnny Tomlinson and Myra Coyle, they're currently now in third place. As WHM Motorsports tries to make a move on the inside, they're trying to run down Pro Floors. But Pro Floors right where they want to be. The checkered flag is in sight. They are the points leaders coming in, and they are going to take the win here at the 2019 APBA National Championships in Fort Myers Beach. Congratulations to the team from New Zealand, Pro Floors, as they take the win in Fort Myers Beach. Second place going to be WHM as they skirt across the wake to go to the outside. But there is your winner, and they secure the national championship. Let's take a look at the official results. Pro Floors takes the win, followed by WHM Motorsports, Performance Boat Center, MCON, Gradel, AMH Motorsports, and Dependable Marine. Oh, look, we're ecstatic. This is, uh, this is a dream come true for me. Um, you know, it's, uh, we've been fighting for this for uh, three and a half seasons over here now. Um, it's always been a goal of mine to win US1, and uh, you know, hey, with the team that we've had this year, has been absolutely fantastic. Let's take a look at our championship standings. Pro Floors takes the overall. WHM Motorsports in second, Performance Boat Center in third, followed by MCON, AMH, Gradel, Broadco, and Dependable. Well, how about that? A great race there in the Supercats, and the tail of that one is exactly how it's been over the season as well. WHM Motorsport pushing hard on Pro Floors, but it wasn't quite enough. The win goes to the boys from New Zealand, and congratulations to them. Time to start talking about all things stock. We have the production classes and P1 Superstock, but first up is the turn of these guys, the Superstock 300 class. 
Thanks, Kevin. We have a green flag and 12 super stocks make their way towards turn one with Jackhammer getting an early lead. They are right alongside FJ Propeller with Libel and Baloo, but Jackhammer out front right now with Lingham and Wade. All of them required to maintain their lanes through the first turn. And FJ Propeller is kind of dropping off a little bit early. They had that inside lane, went in in second place. WIA Insurance wide open throttle racing just on the outside. And FJ Propeller hooks it just a little bit and center punches the buoy. That's going to cost them some time and a penalty. And now Alan Loncare moves out to the front. They have been tough all year long as WIA runs across in second place, followed by Performance Boat Center. Performance Boat Center alongside FJ Propellers. FJ Propellers has that inside lane. Performance Boat Center with Rusty Williams and Myra Coyle. And now Alan Loncare has a problem, allowing WIA to move out to the front. Wide open racing with Lauren Peters and Mike Wright. They are your new leaders here in Fort Myers Beach. And as the checkered flag came out on the final lap, WIA wide open racing takes the win in Superstock, followed by Performance Boat Center with Rusty Williams and Myra Coyle. But there is your winner, WIA wide open racing. Lauren Peters and Mike Wright, they take the win here at the 2019 APBA National Championships. Next across the line, actually in fifth place is the Hulk with Dan Lawrence and Rob Nunziato. They were a lap down. But congratulations to your winner, WIA Insurance Wide Open Racing. They take the win, but Performance Boat Center actually walks away with the U.S. National Championship for 2019. Just going to show it's about consistency. And here are the results for the Superstock race here in Fort Myers Beach. Wide Open Racing takes the win, followed by Performance Boat Center, Wicked Power Boats, CR Racing, The Hulk, Shadow Pirate, FJ Propeller, and Paint Factory. But this was the final race of a championship, and the top podium position for 2019 goes to Performance Boat Center, with CR Racing and Shadow Pirate rounding out the podium. Pontoons have been the fastest growing segment in the marine industry for a lot of years. This is not your grandpa's pontoon boat. Uh, they've really changed over the years with the, the tri-tune, and now we're putting larger motors on them. This boat that we had in the race here actually was our first twin 450 boat, so it had 900 horsepower. Our role was just to be the pace boat or one of three pace boats to help start the race and watching the race, making sure everything goes smoothly. Well, the huge number of fans down here on the beach were just treated to a great one there. Commiserations to Alan Longcare. Boat problem there at the end of that one meant that they were out of it, but big respect to Wide Open Racing, hanging in there and sneaking the win come the checkered flag. We continue now then with P1 Superstock, and one team who'll be looking to gain valuable points in this one are no strangers to the podium themselves. Travelling all the way across the pond for this are Sam and Daisy Coleman, who are with Team Geico. We're really happy to be here in Fort Myers. We're in Geico's P1 boat. Um, we're loving the weather, right? And, like, this is like Sarasota but without the humidity, and uh, the venue's great. Everyone's been so friendly, and we're looking to put some points on the board. So. And Daisy, you've been out testing already in the boat. What's it running like so far? Uh, she's running pretty sweet, Kevin. Uh, we're quite pleased. Um, a lot better than Sarasota. We weren't comfortable in Sarasota. There's a few things, so we've um, been out and done some decent testing today, and we're uh, looking forward to bringing it home tomorrow. Well, best of luck to Sam and Daisy and the other P1 Superstock teams. And don't forget, they're racing alongside those production class boats as well. So let's head on out to the start then and join your race commentators. This is our bracketed class of racing. These boats all run from 115 miles an hour in 10 mile an hour brackets down to 60 miles an hour. They are not allowed to exceed their individual class breakouts as we are underway with our P-Class racing. Off to an early start in class four is the local team, low profile. A tight battle in class six with the number 622 Rum Runners out front of Yabba Dabba Doo. Just to the inside of them is Liquid Addiction. The class seven boat of Evil Ways on the inside as Team Deception comes by on the outside. But a great side-by-side -side battle between Liquid Addiction and Rum Runners as Rum Runners tries to make a run on the outside. Now remember, these boats are bracketed. They cannot exceed their index. 
And there's our overall leader in Class 4 Simmons Racing as the lone entry in P2 comes by. That is Somerset Boatlifts. On to our P1 Superstock class. This is the brother and sister team, Sam and Daisy Coleman, in the number three Geico boat. These boats are all identical. Come out of the same mold, 28 feet long, running the new Mercury 300R engine. This is on board Porta Products, the other P1 Superstock boat on the race course. As we see these two boats running side by side, both of the teams in this boat here from the UK. Porta Products out front of Team Geico as we go on board Porta Products. Well, there you heard them talking about finding the mark as Geico now on the outside of Porta Products. Those two boats running side by side. The idea of this class is parity where all the boats are exactly the same. On to our leader right now in class six. This is Liquid Addiction. As they've gotten past Rum Runner, the checkered flag is out and they will take the win in class six. And coming across in second place, number 645, Team Hammerhead. But your winner in class six is Liquid Addiction with Tim Vanderberg and Jeff Kiffmuller. Let's take a look at our official results. Liquid Edition takes the win, followed by Hammerheads, Deception, New Wave Rum Runner, and Yabba Dabba Doo. In Class 7, the win goes to Evil Waves with Val Fiorillo and Anthony Perry. I'll bet they were glad it was a little bit calm. That was the shortest boat on the race course as Evil Waves takes the win, followed by Shadow Pirate, NJI Motorsports, and On a Mission. In P1 Superstock, it was the culmination of a tough season as Geico takes the win here in Fort Myers Beach, but the overall championship goes to the number three Geico boat, followed by Porta Products in second, and Team Visit St. Pete Clearwater takes third place in the overall championship. Yeah, we're just so pumped to put Geico on the top step. Uh, to win the weekend's great. To wrap up the season championship in P1 Superstock USA is, is awesome, awesome. And Daisy, you were out there with a whole host of boats around you. It must have been quite exciting. It was, Kev. It was pretty hairy at times, and it was really good fun um, to see all the different boats. They're coming from all sorts of shapes, all, all angles. So it was, a, it was a, an experience for us that we really enjoyed, and we really had to up our game to make sure that we were on point. The Fort Myers event, also known as the Raw Offshore, has been put together by local organisers Mike Shepherd and Cindy and Tim Hill. And I'm pleased to say that I caught up with them at the opening VIP party. Looks like you're doing a great job to meet everybody here tonight. He's having great fun. Tell us what's going on, Cindy. So we're having just a meet and greet with the teams, our sponsors, and some VIPs are here just to meet the team and have a great time. We've heard nothing but positive things from the teams and especially the community. Last night at the boat parade, we were expecting about 3,000 people. With the street party and boat parade being on a Thursday night, the Lee County Sheriff's Office told us we had over 10,000 people there last night. So I think that's just a testament to how successful this race is going to be not only this year but for the next 25 30 years mike great to see you here this weekend all of the weeks of planning are now done and we're underway it's going well so far we are extremely happy we're getting great feedback from the racers that's what really makes a difference they're happy with the location they're happy with the hotel it's really a big event especially for the area I mean, they are going to have so much fun out on that course tomorrow. All the racers are so excited. I have not heard a single racer that's not excited about tomorrow. So we're, we're I mean, we're, we're ready to go. Well, more stock now, and this time it's with the Pro Stock V, Super V Extreme, and Class 3 boats. Thanks, Kevin. As the Class 3 boats are all underway, these boats are bracketed to 95 miles an hour. All three of them happen to be Fountain's inboard-powered twin-engine boats. Here are our Super V Extremes. There are seven of these boats out there. These are single engine V bottoms up to 32 feet in length with about a little over 600 horsepower. These boats run just under 100 miles an hour. And then the class that has almost identical boats to them, this is Pro Stock V. The difference is here, they have stock sealed Mercury 525 engines and they're making about 550 horsepower. As we go on board Strictly Business, this is in class three. 
And they have a substitute driver in the boat this time. That is Boomer Smith in there with Louie. And here is the battle for the lead in Pro Stock V. Lily Sport Boats Revex Oil on the outside. Done deal on the inside. As we look at Punisher right now, they are out front in the Super V Extreme category. You see those boats run pretty loose as we go on board Boat Floater. This is the father and son team of Steve and Steven Kildall. And you can see how much he's racking that wheel trying to run down Punisher. Oh, and Strictly Business is slowing down. What is going on? That's what's going on. We have a boat upside down on the race course. That is Team Raven. Number 41, upside down. Well, with the boat upside down, the red flag is out. The rescue divers are in the water, but both drivers are okay. They'll be checked up by medical before they're released, but that brings an end to the Pro Stock race in the SVX class. The win in Pro Stock V goes to Lily Sport Boat Racing, followed by JRC Transportation, Played Again Racing, RNS Racing, Octane, Fast Boys, and Phase 5. In SVX, Punisher takes the win, followed by BoatFloater.com, JRA Boat Sales, Marker 17, Sunprint, Mr. Technology, Team Raven, and Sheriff Lobo. We have a crowd in Fort Myers Beach as up next is Class 1 USA. We'll be right back right after this. Here at Fort Myers Beach, the Class 1 teams are getting ready for the final race of the season. And for this round, the victory team are fielding not one, but two boats. This should be exciting. Normally I'm driving Formula 1 for victory team, but then a couple of months ago they called me and asked if I wanted to, to come and join them for a race in Florida. Like, Never been to Florida, never raced Class 1, so it was an easy yes. Um, you know, it's a, it's a boy dream to, to, to drive one of these boats once in your life. So, like, right now I'm living my dream, so it's, it's, it's really amazing. Uh, we tested both boats today. I uh, spent a lot of time in the Victory Team boat today. Me and Eric did nine laps, his first time in this boat. So getting him some seat time, but he's an excellent driver. And, you know, just getting him the feel for this boat compared to what he does in F1. I think we know what we're going to do tomorrow with that boat. This boat, we got a real good feel for it. I think the weather today, tomorrow is going to be identical to today. So I think we're going to be in real good shape in this boat. Are very excited. Uh, we know the boats very well, um, so we don't have any problem. Uh, we saw the condition here, sea condition, very nice, uh, but quiet. Uh, no, no, uh, no wind, no, uh, no waves. So I think will be a very calm uh, race, uh, but uh, tough at the same time. It's very important race for uh, me and for my team. Uh, equal points with two to two offshore. I will be fight to the end and be safe to the boat to the end. Also here in Fort Myers Beach this weekend are the ever popular team of Miss Geico. As we were hearing earlier, they've certainly had their ups and downs this season and are currently sat in third. But with the super experienced team of Steve Curtis and Miles Jennings at the helm, you certainly can't write these guys off. <laughs> It seems pretty windy here, but outside it's meant to be pretty flat, and we were hoping it was going to be pretty rough outside, but the wind hasn't come around. So, yeah, it's an exciting time. There's still a mathematical chance we can win the championship, um, although it's very unlikely, but we're just going to go out there. We've made some certain changes from the last race to hopefully gain a bit of performance. So we know we're going to be in the game. We just want to be at the front end of it. It's a really, really close series at the moment. You know, I was lucky to stick in with Steve for St. Clair and Michigan City. Yeah. And uh, let's see, Englewood hopefully at the end of the year. But uh, the race is all to play for. Anybody can win. Uh, obviously, we've got to come first. Some of the other teams can afford to be second. But it's all to play for. It's going to be fantastic. It's all been great coming to America to get to race. Probably the biggest low would be the first race at uh, Cocoa Beach when we were in Guardian mode regularly once we got the lead, so that was that. But as a whole up package, 
it's great. All the fast drivers is here at this moment. Victory with a lot of title. Steve Curtis with a lot of title too. And so the fight is complete. Uh, we need only to finish this day in the best position we can, so forth. You can probably see and hear behind me the Class 1 boats are heading on out to the start. So let's go and join your race commentators and take a look at the course and the conditions. All right, let's take a look at our race course here for the Class 1 race here at Fort Myers Beach. Five mile lap, eight turns as they head south towards turns one, two, and three. That'll set them up to go south to four. A left hand dog leg at five, six, seven, and eight at the south end of the course. Set them up for the long straightaway to the start finish line at the Diamond Head Beach Resort. All right, the starter is trying to get everybody in a single line so we can throw the green flag and we'll be on our way for the final race of the weekend here at Fort Myers Beach. These are the class one boats. Six class one boats making their way towards turn one, waiting for the green flag. The two victory team boats straddling Miss Geico as we're still under yellow flag. And there's the green flag. We are underway in Fort Myers Beach. Off to an early jump is the number three victory boat with Salib Aladidi and Elsa Alali out front. Geico kind of getting squeezed a little bit as the number 33 victory boat is pulling up alongside on the outside is triple two. Our one lone V bottom running into class Lucas Oil on the extreme outside. So victory team has the inside lane going into turn one. Geico splits right between the two of them. They are required to maintain their lane on the outside of victory 33. That is triple two. So victory number three out front. About a rooster tail behind is the second boat as we go on board with Eric Stark and Johnny Tomlinson in victory number 33. Just to their outside is triple two. Triple two and number three were tied for points coming into the final race here. As Darren Nicholson trying to get himself around the number 33 boat as he's way to the outside and off to the inside there is a number three as number 33 makes a run hard on the outside pushing the number triple two boat farther to the outside, which is gonna give them a tough place to be when they get to that left-hand dog leg. Let's take a look at that start again. There's triple two going past number 33, the second victory team boat, and there Miss Geico on the inside, number 113. But in the lead going into that turn was the number three boat. Triple two boat alongside Miss Geico. Geico dropping off just a little bit. As triple two goes around, puts Geico back a little bit farther. Geico slows down going into that turn. As we go back on board with Eric Stark and Johnny Tomlinson in victory number 33. So your leaderboard right now is victory number three, followed by victory 33 and then triple two. On board with Darren Nicholson and Giovanni Carpitella as they are currently running in third place, trying to find some clean water to get around the number 33 entry of victory. These boats capable of speeds upwards of 150 miles an hour, all of them running the Mercury Racing 1100 turbocharged engines. As we again look at the triple two boat, and they are an Australian based team but they've got to get themselves ahead of the number three boat if they want to take the championship. See him pretty much just holding the throttles wide open, letting off a little bit as they go into the turns. Salim Aladidi and Elsa Alali in victory number three. Here's the second victory team boat, Eric Stark and John Tomlinson. Triple two tries to split them. Triple two is really trying to find some clean water to find a way to get around these two boats. As he goes a little bit more to the inside, on board with Miles Jennings and Steve Curtis, on board Miss Geico. Geico definitely in recovery mode after going upside down in Sarasota running a spare boat at the moment. On board Victory. As you see the other Victory boat just off to their right. And right now, Victory 33 is challenging number three 
John Tomlinson moving that boat out to the front, along with Eric Stark. Has him by just about a nose, but he's on the outside, so he's going to have to let off a little bit. That's going to allow the number three boat to hold on to the lead as triple two comes in behind him. Squares off, goes to the inside. Triple two, you see him trying to find that clean water. He's back and forth across the wake. It's definitely not as fast to stay right in that white water as triple two now drives by John Tomlinson and Eric Stark. They are definitely slowing down. Looks like they might have had a guardian situation cause them to drop off, but that puts triple two solidly in second place here in Fort Myers Beach. We'll be back with more racing at the APBA National Championships right after this. Welcome back to Fort Myers Beach in the 2019 APBA Offshore National Championships here from Fort Myers Beach. Victory number three continues to lead, and whatever the issue was with 33, they are back up and running. Made a great turn to the inside, but they are now in third place trying to run down triple two. Triple two on the outside, number 33 coming up on the inside. 33 clearly has a little bit of boat speed working for him, but triple two carried it on the outside, and they're able to hold him off. As they head to the south turn, victory number three in the lead. Triple two on the outside in second place, but coming up hard on the inside is victory number 33 as we go on board with Eric Stark and John Tomlinson. This is on board with our leader, victory team number three. Geico currently running in fourth place. Not where they want to be in this competition with Miles Jennings and Steve Curtis. Currently running in fourth position. That battle for the lead right now out front. Victory number three, triple two, trying to run up on the inside. Victory team just has to run smart. Oh, triple two gets over the top of the rooster tail. Oh, that's the dangerous move. Great recovery by the triple two team. That's the risk when you go back and forth across that wake, especially that close to the rooster tail. And you see Victory put the hammers down as they apex that turn, heading onto the front straightaway. And triple two pushes to the outside. With Victory 33 going even wider yet as we go on board Victory 33 with Eric Stark and John Tomlinson. And you see their vantage point looking at the rooster tail of Triple Two. With Darren Nicholson and Giovanni Carpitella. Coming towards the start finish line. Heading southbound on the course, number three out front. They've opened up a little bit more of a margin on triple two. Followed by the number three victory team boat as they've now settled into a groove. We also have two V-bottoms out there on the race course. This is Instigator Knucklehead running. There is also another V-bottom out there running. That is the Lily Sport Boat entry. But Instigator Knucklehead is out front. There you see the victory team boat going around the Lily Sport Boat entry. Currently running in second place in the V Extreme class. And back on board with Miles Jennings and Steve Curtis in Miss Geico. As they're currently running in fourth place in class one. Back to our leader in class one, the number three victory boat. They have got to hold off triple two in order to win the championship. Triple two charging up. They go through the rooster tail again, hose down the canopy, trying to find that fast way around the race course to make up some ground on the number three boat. Back on board, Miss Geico still running in fourth place. Running solid, but just don't have the boat speed today. Miss Geico with Miles Jennings and Steve Curtis. As we look at our leader coming around the south end turn. 
And triple two right on their tails. Continuing to go wide, trying to find that clean water. And the checkered flag is in sight for the number three victory boat. As they chase down to the checkered flag, are they gonna hold off triple two? It looks like they're going to. Victory takes the win here in Fort Myers Beach. Triple two comes in second, and that's how they're gonna finish in the championship series as well. Victory number three takes the win. Triple two comes in second place. Let's take a look at the results here in Fort Myers Beach. The win goes to victory team number three, followed by triple two offshore, victory team 33, and Miss Geico. I feel I want to to flip like inside the cockpit. I feel like I want to cry in that moment. So I don't, I, we, we, you know, with the seat belt, I, I want to open the seat. I am belt actually like, crying. But, but. <laughs> And for the 2019 APBA Class 1 USA Championship, victory number three takes the win by one point over triple two offshore with Miss Geico coming in third. So there you go, the weekend is coming to a close, but I'm pleased to say I've dragged the man, the voice that you've been listening to for the whole show out of his commentary position. <laughs> Down to the sand, Martin Sanborn. Good to see you, my it's friend. It's good to be down on the beach. Here we are, and we are wrapping things up, but you raced here years ago. It is so good to be back at Fort Myers Beach, isn't it? It's amazing to be back. I mean, I've got a lot of personal feelings about being back here and coming back and going to the restaurants and, and seeing everything. And then the people have been so excited to have the racing back. It's been fantastic. So looking forward to coming back yeah. again. And you know, this is our first season working with OPA. And what it's really done is the number of boats we've had per event is on a level that's approaching yeah. the best it's ever been. So if we can carry on that momentum, that's fantastic for the sport. It's great for all of the venues. Gives us something to do every other weekend, right? It means we might be back here next year. Uh, you know what? According to a couple people I talked to, that's already in the works. There you go. Mine, thanks ever so much. We're going to be back here next year on the sand, and we hope that you'll be at home watching along. Until then, from myself, Kev Harris, and Martin Sanborn, see ya. So long. <laughs>